All right, guys, in this video, we are going to be making a collapsible tray system for the ever famous pack out drawer, cart, whatever you want to call it. But first, um, let me tell you something about this little setup right here. <laughs> If you're not new, if you, there's a lot of people that are actually still new to this and I haven't even bought these yet. Uh, I work now at a tool store and I see people all the time that are asking about these or trying them out for the first time. So yeah, I'm pretty sure who, if you're watching this video, uh, you might not have this system yet and you're wondering about whether it's good or not. So I'm gonna begin with that because that's the most useful information out of this video. This is for something more advanced if you really want to uh, go full at it. This is later on, but uh, yeah, these are about 150 each. This is like a $300 setup with just these two only. Uh, I think one's 160 and one's 159 or something, and they're going up. So this is quite a dedication right here if you wanna go full blown into it. And um, the most questions I get asked about this setup is, it, is it good for a mechanic? Is it good for a mechanic? No, I can't really say it because yeah, this is about as heavy as you can go on a drawer before it starts hitting the bottom here and scraping because these drawers are plastic. You have metal rails on them, but it's still plastic. It's not like a metal toolbox drawer that doesn't bend. If you overload this too much, right here I have a quarter inch set and pretty much uh, my catch-all for all my Milwaukee stuff here, screwdrivers, flashlights, um, this is pieces from my uh, European installation driver. So these are the extra pieces that it comes with. This is the FPDX, FPDX installation driver pieces, if you're wondering about that. This tray right here is an Ernst tray, Ernst manufacturing tray. I don't know if you can see it down in there. Ernst and um, here's some random stuff, a ratchet back there. And this just barely, clears it so you can't hear nothing on that one that's about as max as you can go right there i have uh bits and sandpaper and stuff down here this is perfect for a little small shop because it's not an oversized cart or anything you can move it out of the way and with this collapsible tray system it will make it more better in this tight area i can flip it open have a nice work area flip it back down when I don't need it, so it works out for me. It may not work out for you, and definitely not a mechanic shop or anything, because mechanic shops have a lot of heavy sockets and stuff. It's just, not, it's plastic. It's not for you. And maybe a van, and if it if it doesn't move a lot and you want to have other pack outs that you want to remove on top, and keep it in the van, have supplies in there, that might work out well. But yeah, as a mechanic, uh, it's just, it's better to have supplies. If you're like, um, more of an electrician side and the mechanic side. You have a lot of um, little um, supplies for like installing um, stuff on the car maybe, or if you're in the race industry, you have little parts and stuff that might work out for you, but it is r rather heavy without anything in it already. So this setup is pretty heavy already. I have issues trying to take it outside to work on a car or something to have a nice platform outside to work on the car. It does uh, hit that bottom area and you gotta lift up on it and. Yeah, it is quite heavy, but um, in here, it's perfect. I can cut my stuff on the miter saw. I can put wood on it, level it out, put something on top of here, and just it, it works out nice. It's out of the way and um, just the right size. So I like it in my setup. It may not work for you. Yeah, that was definitely a lot to swallow, but either this is going to be entertainment value for you or maybe spark an idea. So uh, let's begin with the folding wall brackets here. I bought these on Amazon a while back. I forgot what the listing looked like, but I was able to select how many I wanted. There was 10 inch, so it's a 10 inch folding wall bracket. Holds 150 pounds, I believe. It's It's been a while. These have been sitting here for a while <laughs> collecting dust. They come in a pair, so I ordered two pairs. Uh, I forgot how much they were too, so I don't know if I'll have a total on this whole project. Yeah, it's already, this thing's already like, what, 400 bucks for this setup. So, yeah, you got to be dedicated to do this. So, um, with the packable, we'll open that in a minute. They are the the universal mounts and maybe something else in there. I don't have no idea what he'll have in there. So, that would be cool to check out. Check them out, packable. 
I picked that up for 14 bucks on clearance. That was a just like a random like unicorn. I, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a little yellow tag and that was the last one left, stacked up with a whole bunch of wall mounts and it was the only one on top. Grabbed that sucker real fast, 14 bucks from $52. That's That was a find right there. Um, I, I don't know, by the time you watch this video, you might not see any in the clearance section or in the aisle. They'll have them in the aisle that, that way too. So yeah, not, I'm not guaranteeing that you will. It was definitely a unicorn find on that one. Also with the <laughs> dolly, uh, I so happened to have a candy store near me and I showed up at the right day at the right time where they had that out. It was damaged and I brought it home. Just the top part was damaged and this is the bottom part. I, I tore it all apart. I took all the screws out. Um, there might be a video out there on Instagram where I tore it apart in, in fast speed motion. But I kept the plate and I kept the cup holders on the back. The top mount was thrown away in the garbage at the store, so I couldn't salvage that one. I cut it up a little bit and put zip ties. That's just for decoration right there. So that looked cool right there, as you can see. It just it's just there for decorative reasons. I just zip tied it for now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the the universal mount, so that's why I zip tied it at the moment. It actually holds quite good. I've put a few things in there so far, but uh that'll be changed during this project. And I will cut this one in half first before I even mess with that top. So I'm not sure which one I wanna do first, or I might do both, because the top, if I cut it in half, it might still lock on there. I will definitely want one of these slim pack outs to level out with the top. So I can have it either level with the bottom if I remove the top, or I can put one of these if I want to level it to the top. That would be cool right there. And it'd be cool having it folded down. And yeah, I have to figure out how to remove these very, very thick pieces down here. It's getting part of my dust. Yeah, these will be a little bit of a pain to remove. I don't know if I want to cut that back down a little bit, but definitely I have a nice line and nice area there to cut it in half. So first off, let's look and see what's inside this packable box. All right, so the moment I've been waiting for for a very long time, I ordered these from Alex, the owner of Packable Tool, like last year, I don't remember, maybe October. And uh, he had a long journey of getting these out and I had them shipped not too long ago and I think they've been sitting for like a month or two in the shed. We have all of those in there. We have a pack of Skittles with some cool RAM adapter mount rail stickers there. That looks cool. And a thank you card. Alex Van Dyke, owner of Packable Tool. And I have a special offer there, and uh, hopefully you can uh, enjoy that too as well. <laughs> we'll see if that works for you. If it does, great. And uh, yeah, a little Skittles package here. Let's see what's inside. Packable sticker. Nice. And instructions. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. And let's see how these bad boys look like. Ah, nice. Pretty cool. Let's uh, see what they look like and let's see how they install. All right, it's time to install them. This design is different. There is no way to take this black cover off here. And there's like one way tabs there. I, I looked at it, I took a good close look at it. This snaps into place and I think once it snaps into place, uh, it can never be snapped out without uh, drilling some retainers out that are in there there's a little hole there and there's no screw in there or anything there is a screw down in here but that really doesn't hold anything the only thing that really holding this rail down is just that little tab right there that's all that's holding this rail in that screw doesn't hold that in it could slide down so all we're going to do is take a screwdriver to that and pop it out all right, so I got a small little dull flathead here, just thin enough so I can fit it down in here, but I'm gonna kinda like round it off here a little bit. It helps out so I can, that little tab can pass over right there. Um, 
So all I gotta do, pry up a little bit right here. So it goes down a little bit. And then kind of help it out a little bit here. Just, just be careful not to mar too much because this is basically all that holds it in. So as we can see, that is on the end right here. There's a little screw right in there, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, so there's a little screw in there, but you still don't have to take it off. These just go right on. You can put it that direction, whatever you want to mount on that side, or you can put it in the other direction. You want to mount something on this side. So that's pretty cool right there. Yeah, just make sure the screw is backed out and just slide them on down. And yeah, this is just decoration purposes. There's a screw right in there that holds that in and yeah, it does no purpose. All right, so the large ones are definitely more heavier duty than the bottom ones. They take quarter inch screws and I believe these are six, number six screws right there on the small one. So I'm putting the larger heavier duty one on the top just because the weight on the L brackets right here, all the weight's gonna be right here. And the bottom one is gonna be smaller as a pivot point down here. So slide them on the configuration that you want. And then there's no turning back. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you uh, do this several times, that will wear out. And that is the only thing that's holding it in. I'm gonna be using a little mallet here to snap it back into place. And that's it. It does still hold quite well. Um, if anything, just put a screw up here and it'll never come out. Maybe another one down in there if you don't care the way it looks like. But yeah, then you lock them in to your desired height. All right, so this Michael Pro T handle is coming in handy with the ball end right here. You can easily access the eighth of an inch little hex. Both of the same right here. I don't like the number six, how it aligns right here. It doesn't uh, align just right. So I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle in between both of these right here. So it's right in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this spring tool little center punch here and i'm going to center punch it right in the spot that i need to right i think it's right there exactly and i'm going to drill a hole right there all right this cheap amazon quarter 20 you have the 20 pitch on the thread so it's a quarter inch 20 can go through this but it takes quite a bit it's quite thick it's aluminum it's soft it can handle it i'm not going to spend too much money on one of these but uh to speed things up i'm going to be using this cobalt hyper step from matco to go on through there like butter it is the dbc 21 hs set quarter is the size of the hole but i go two steps down to the 730 seconds yeah which should be fine with chasing it after with the thread drill. You gotta be patient. You gotta go slow and don't use too much force. Yeah, these 
This is quite thick for that bit. I knew that from the beginning. Fortunately, this is the last one, and uh, I'll see if I can get it out with uh, these Cobras. <laughs> All right, that was fun. I think I just got enough threads in there to get a screw in there. Fortunately, this Hazet number three has a good bite on these screws. Yeah, I'm starting to go through the back. And uh, after this, uh, I'm gonna mock it up for the plate cutting in half. And uh, this will be done for now. Yeah, see, all these turned out fine. Just gotta have it just right, but I'm gonna cut the plate in half first. All right, so here's the bottom of the dolly. I was thinking about making some sort of guide to uh, cut it straight, but I think I'm just gonna freehand it with this uh, Diablo Steel Demon blade. And we'll see how it goes, and I might try down there too, but I'm gonna cut it in half first. All right, that was a nice, smooth, easy cut with the Diablo blade. Barely have to do any work of filing it down. Super nice. All right, for the other two cuts, I'm simply clamping it right there and I'm just gonna kind of plunge cut it down as best as I can and uh, do the other one right after that. All right, there we go. This is the perfect job right now for the Milwaukee M12 cutoff tool. I can smooth things out really quick and easy. Nice and light work for this guy. This guy's not too strong, but a uh, little light stuff like this works out great. All right, that's the best I could do right there. Maybe do a little bit more sanding. And then, I think that was from the saw right there. But uh, this side turned out really nice. Maybe a little bit of sanding, touch up with a little paint marker, and it's good. All right, doing a little bit of mock-up here. Dolly plate cut in half, came out nice. Did a little bit of grinding there, smoothed it all out. Seems to fit good this way. This hangs out a little bit right here, but I'm gonna have that cup holder thing back there, so that will work out perfectly fine there. It's looking really good, guys. Can't go much higher with the bracket. Right there, that's all I have to work with right here, and I kinda like how this slim pack out and the top meet very, very close right there, so I like that. Next step is to cut this in half and do more mocking up because I think the plates need to be closer in and it, by going closer in the arms are too long so i'm gonna have to cut the arms just right so i can put the plates in yeah so next step is yay more cutting and if you do want it higher with just one piece or with the dolly piece up to here it's gonna be a lot more modification too as well you're gonna have to probably put a bar right here and then the bracket up higher put the bar up to here to make it flush and that's a lot of work right there a lot of measuring so i'd rather have it this way cut this in half cut the arms all four arms here to move this over and we'll see how it goes all right what's inside of a pack out worktop let's see right here lift up the plywood is very nicely made. It is a half inch thick, and you can also reverse it, but you do have to do the countersink on the other side if you need to. And the instructions, this, and screws. So I might not need two of them. I might use these on the actual plate later, but I do only get two, so I might use different fasteners for that, but. Right, here's the inside the screws go in here and uh, that's pretty much it I'm gonna have to remove this springy thing here 
All right, now pretty easy. Just had to stick a small screwdriver in and pry both sides out. Came out quite easy. This stuff is really rugged, really strong. I can see that lasting a while. So now it's time to cut in half. Well, looks like I got a little cleaning up to do. Let's see if this Michael Pro reamer has a couple points on there where I can uh, ream it out a little bit here. Eh, I might do the trick. Kind of a little glimpse here of what it's gonna look like. I sanded the edges as best as I could after routing and you could barely notice where these screws were. There's not much meat to catch on here and it doesn't move much as you can see. Maybe later on it might warp a little bit. So if anything to make this more secure, I would need a screw right there because there is a support right here in the middle. I would have to drill a hole countersink it and put a screw right there but for now i'm going to leave it that way nice and simple and smooth the next step is to do the rails because we have quite a bit of gaps here on both sides i want it to be a little bit more flush everything goes down so i don't have to worry about anything interfering here and yeah the rails are too long here and it kind of lifts it up a little bit and down here we can see it rubs the edge right there all right, another issue I have is I have to figure out how to tighten this up a little bit, but uh, found a good spot here. It's a little bit further to the back, but I don't mind. You can barely notice it. And down here, got one screw right up in there so far on the tube itself. Rather than cutting and having sharp edges here, I am just gonna drill another hole back here a little bit right into the tube and then just go corner by corner uh, I'm gonna have to find a spot over here. This might look weird. Might just need a couple little washers on that corner. And uh, yeah, three out of four is not bad. I'll make it work. All right, this part was a little bit tricky. So I'm getting you a nice shot down here. I had to uh, line the tube nice and straight up here. So this hole didn't quite make it all the way into the tube right here. So I had to drill a hole a little bit further back here thread it in, I threaded this one in as well, little by little, by hand, slowly this time. <laughs> Had to drill a new hole on that, just on the end right there, which turned out nicely right there. Back here in the back corner, I found a dowel threaded right into the plate itself, so it stuck out just a little bit. It doesn't interfere with the pack out, so that wasn't too bad. Just had to get a longer screw, a dowel, and a fatter washer right there and i found the right spot for that one and yeah we have now a folding shelf i think the front one yeah front one goes first back one goes second had to do a little bit of bending because everything didn't fit quite right but after that just a little bit bending on the edge so it didn't bind works nice and smooth all right with the milwaukee ink Zoll, i think it's a water-based paint it has a symbol there that you can uh, switch the chisel tip on the other side. So you got to pull that out actually. And yeah, you get all messy there to switch it over to the chisel chip. And I'm using the round tip and just gently dab a little bit on the end. This is all dry over here and it turned out nice. All right, guys, it is looking sharp. Just some little minor adjustments here and there. Had to go back and forth with the T-handle, back and forth, getting it just right with the two work tops right there. I looked right there to make them flush right here on this edge, both together. As we can see, has a little bit of movement on that one, but made it flush and got it a little higher on that side because weight will eventually bring it down over time. And this 
metal part back here does not look bad right here the way it sits have a nice metal area here to make a lighted worktop which is quite nice sits a little low but yeah it is awesome <laughs> love it and yeah had to uh decide on making this permanent <laughs> screwed right into it those locked it into place after making a slotted hole on each corner on this piece made a slotted hole put two screws right into the pack out and slid it up into that slotted hole and locked it into place with the two bottom screws this piece right here i'm still keeping it there for now zip tied i'll see if i want to change it later or make it functional which is just there for decoration yeah it is looking very very nice all right we're gonna start off with bare bones minimum here so this is how it looks like with nothing on it fully folded this is as compact as gonna get with no work top this is 35 inches tall so if you're worried about height that's it 35 inches tall and you're adding an extra inch and a three quarter yeah a little bit over inch and a half so inch and three quarter i'd give it give or take right there yeah inch and three quarter inch and three quarter and of course these are 10 inch folding shelves so we have a little bit over 10 here and over here simple setup with a 44 inch wingspan here so it is a lot longer than it is tall so 35 and 44 <laughs> so yeah a lot of workspace here and uh yeah you would have to worry about stuff falling down so you can maybe get like a different style tray right here if you're worried about stuff falling down. And if you do want to get like a thin piece of plywood and mount it with some stealth mounts. I haven't even tried these yet, but I'll eventually figure something out to do with these stealth mount cleat and feet mounting system. They're kind of an air interference fit. Uh, I don't believe they sell a lock. Uh, there's probably people out there that sell locks so you can lock the feet in place but like it'd be more like an interference fit and get it to stay that way and have a long surface or a three piece surface or whatnot with this setup this way. All right, here is another way of doing it. If you have the small toolbox with the rails, you could put it on top like that and you can uh, put the packable pieces in there too. It's a lot simpler on this one, just a Phillips screw in there, you unscrew it, and the rail comes out. Same with the piece on here, it doesn't do anything, it's, the rail just comes out, and you can put one of those pieces there, you can put the shelves up higher if you want. This does sit up quite high, it's about 41 inches high, but uh, it's good eye level if you have a laptop up here, and you want to put foam right here, close it off at the end of the night, and there you go, like that. If you want to do it that way and you can put a lot of heavy stuff up here and not have to worry about putting the heavy stuff in the drawers which can bow over time all right so this is the setup that i will be having for a little while now this is still going to be a little bit of work in progress but i like the state that i have it now it does stick out a good five inches right here of chunkiness here yeah so if i put this one down it's gonna be quite chunky but not too bad here how this is how it looks like with them on the side but i can always put them somewhere else when i have it stowed away like this but yeah five inches and five inches there and i also have to work on locking this in because it is rather loose and all i have to do is bump it back here and it's on the ground so i might gut all this out and put a piece of plywood here and screw it in from the back keep this nice and clean and I might cut this little piece here in half and use one half for one side and one half for the other side here uh, and reuse the spring and make like a little channel right here so it locks in that way and then kind of hide it all with the plywood and everything somehow. And then I'm, I have to make a little adjustments here and there. But other than that, it's just a little work in progress there. Still love it how I have it right now. Just flip it up and boom, locks into place. Flip this one up. Simple, simple. 
locks into place and I get a full 48 inch wingspan here. <laughs> it does stick out a little further with the pack out tops on top. So yeah, definitely lots of workspace here. Turned out super, super nice. Let me know how you like it in the comments. And yeah, very easy. Just take that off, take that off, flip it down, flip this down. Very one hand friendly, I like that. Clicks back up, click the pack out on, click the top on. Very, very versatile. Loving it. This is definitely a fun, fun project. Thank you guys for sticking along with me on this one. And hopefully I'll get more content out soon. Sorry guys, it's been a while. But yeah, very, very cool. Thanks again, guys. Thank you for watching.